Afternoon, everyone. I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. Just got back from taking my cat to the vet, Mittens. He's my black and white cat. Pretty darn close to being 14 years old. All is good. He's got a sinus infection, so they gave him an antibiotic and some kind of nasal decongestant to help dry up his sinuses. So thank you for your prayers. I appreciate it. So does Mittens. Been having an earthquake swarm there um, by Desert Air Washington, the state of Washington. The largest being a magnitude 2.9. Um, there's been 72 earthquakes in this area in the last week. In the last 24 hours, there's been 46 earthquakes. They've all been about the same depth, 4.7 miles. This magnitude 2.9 started at about 8.22 p.m. late last night there. 15 people said that they did feel this earthquake. Sent in reports to USGS Did You Feel It website. It looks like the farthest report to the north uh, was Everett. And is that Kendrick? I'm not sure. Um, that is the farthest report to the south. Here we got the Yakima Fold Belt. Yeah, it's probably created because of that. And I only put um, the earthquakes that were a magnitude 2.0 or greater. I did put in a 1.6 here just for reference and a 1.2. Those of you that live um, in Seattle might think, well, that earthquake swarms a long ways away from me, so I don't have to worry. Well, in a study... Um, that was done back in 2011. They found that the Yakima Fold Belt is linked to active Puget Sound faults, or the Puget Sound. I probably pronounced it wrong, so I, sorry. But also what is concerning about this location, let me bring this out for you. Okay. Um, much of this farmland is all contaminated because of the uh, Hanford nuclear site right there. I got it drawn out in red there. Um, yeah, 200 miles downstream all the way to Oregon. Yeah, the water's been contaminated with radiation. The Yakima Fold Belt is also a thrust belt. Um, it's in the south central area of the state of Washington. So let me bring this out, and I'll show you how it goes all the way down to the um, Puget Sound. Okay, let's bring this out, and we'll come down. There you go. Yeah, not good. And to think, too, that this whole area and the fish and the farming is all contaminated by radiation. Yeah, like they say, every action has a reaction, right? Are you prepared for a large earthquake? So, yeah, it's showing. Yeah, and I got drawn out here showing the direction um, that this area is moving. And I got some other different faults drawn out. There's multiple faults within this area. It looks like they were between uh, four and a half to maybe five miles deep. Often what happens too with uh, earthquakes is the fault moves. Um, yeah, it'll get shallower and shallower and closer to the surface. Um, shallow earthquakes will do more damage than deeper earthquakes but these are not really that deep yeah, let me bring it down it looks like this sequence of earthquakes all started back on the 21st and i've talked about how any earthquake can be a foreshock for something much larger and only three days later yeah today the 23rd um late last night Yep, that's when they had the uh, larger earthquake, which was the magnitude 2.9. Because this is a um, fold thrust belt, yeah, we got the mountains that are building up, but thrust earthquakes are the worst kind you can possibly have. Because of the compression that's happening there, yeah, one side would uh, of the fault would rise up and the other side would stay stationary. This is a uh, 5,400 square mile of tectonic subduction of particular seismic risk 
is the concern about the uh, nuclear facilities at the Hanford Nuclear Reservation and also the Tri-Cities major dams on the Columbia and Snake Rivers. Anywhere along here would be capable of having a magnitude 7.1 or larger earthquake. And just think of all the destruction. Yeah, for miles and miles around. Um, those that could be killed. Those that would be injured. See how it goes into the Seattle Fault here. And often when you have large earthquakes, they trigger earthquakes on other fault lines. We got the Tacoma Fault. Um, let's see, we got the Port Angels here. Um, Lake Creek Boundary uh, Creek Fault. And then up over here, we got the Harl Strait Faults. These are fairly new faults they recently discovered back in 2011. Um, the Birch Bay Faults. Yeah. The largest earthquake in this location, I believe, recently was in uh, 1872. That was the magnitude 7.4. December 14th, 1872. The earthquake is the largest historical earthquake in eastern Washington. And the most widely felt earthquake in the state. The magnitude of the shallow earthquake centered around Lake Chelan, Washington. And it's debated. They really don't know. It was estimated between um, a magnitude 6.5 and a 7.5 with a maximum um, mercantile intensity level of 9. It was felt over uh, 390,000 miles. Landslides and groundwater disruptions um, occurred near the lake and along the Columbia River. And fissures split the ground south of Seattle. Damage included chimney cracks and shattered windows. People were knocked off their feet in Suquamie Pass and trees knocked over. And I'll give you a link to this document if you want to read more about other earthquakes that occurred there in the state of Washington. Those of you that follow me will remember all the chatter about the threat of large earthquakes hitting this area. And that being the reason why they shut down some of the military shipyards that build the uh, military vessels and submarines. So they must feel that something large is coming. Yeah, this is a really um, long fault zone. Yeah, I only got part of it drawn out. So what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please share, and make sure you're still subscribed near the end of the month and they they them there at Google start unsubscribing people from their favorite channels I don't know why um, yeah as always be safe and I will talk to you later God bless you bye